Hi, this is Carla Scott. I'm a world traveler. I've traveled to more than 80 nations, and I've been traveling overseas for more than three decades. Welcome to today's topic, which is, what should your travel checklist be of activities that you can't leave for the last minute? If you're planning to travel overseas, and you happen to be one of those last minute packers who likes to pack the night before or the morning of your trip, there are certain things that you need to plan two weeks or at least one week in advance of your trip if you're going to travel overseas. So here are some of my suggestions. First of all, I'd like for you to write a pack list. Make sure that you have everything on the list before you begin packing. So write the list and make sure you have the items. Some of the major categories that I include are passport and all travel documentation, outerwear, clothing, shoes, underwear, toiletries, cosmetics, medications, workout clothing, swimwear, sleepwear, travel guides, spare eyeglasses, extra luggage tags, cash, key electronics and chargers, extra credit cards, antibiotics, an umbrella, reading materials, at least one washcloth for each hotel, and more. Here's my list. It's usually one to two pages and I have it categorized. Now you may be wondering why did I include at least one washcloth for every single hotel? Well that's because the washcloth phenomena is pretty unique to North America and it's important to me, so I always carry them. Next, I want you to think carefully about your carry-on luggage. <coughs> I always like to bring everything that I absolutely cannot do without on my trip, just in case my luggage never arrives. That happened to me once and I've watched that happen to countless other people. So this could include items such as your prescription medications, your spare eyeglasses, chargers for your electronics, um, and some extra underwear and socks. Everything else you may just have to purchase once you arrive. Next, I'd like for you to think about any medical issues, any prescription medications you may need, and any vaccines that you've investigated that you might think you need. Make that appointment with your doctor ask them to call in your medications. I highly recommend that everyone bring along an antibiotic because you just never know when you need one. And if you get a little car sick or seasick, bring along some seasickness medication. Next, I'd like for you to contact your credit card and ATM companies and banks and notify them of all of your travel destinations. You want to make sure they don't block your transactions because they don't expect you to be in those places. While you're at it, I want you to find out what are their transaction fees. Uh, these days it's usually $5 per transaction for credit cards and ATMs and also what percentage they charge of the total. Yes, they charge a percentage of the total. You also might want to explore if they have any alliances with other banks overseas such that um, in some cases they will waive that transaction fee, that $5 transaction fee. So you might want to check on that. Next, definitely make sure that you have some U.S. currency. That's important. And you might want to make sure that you have small denominations. I actually make sure that I bring all of them. I bring ones and fives and tens and twenties and fifties and one hundreds. Toward the end of a stay in a country, you may need just a little more cash. So instead of having to exchange an entire hundred dollar note, you maybe only want to change thirty dollars worth. Um, also, keep in mind that U.S. currency and small denominations might come in handy for tips. But remember, only in certain countries would that ever be appropriate. Uh, do that research on your own. Next, make sure that you know all of your passwords to your key accounts, especially financial and healthcare related. You never know when you'll need to access them. 
Um, make sure you have enough cash in your checking account. Yes, I've known of some people who could not withdraw money from their ATM because they didn't bother to make sure that they had an adequate cash in their checking account. Next, I'd like for you to make sure that all of your closest loved ones have copies of your travel itinerary, including all of your hotel information. Also, never arrive in another country without at least some local currency. Make sure that when you arrive, you have at least enough cash for a taxi, for some food, and maybe a few other items. You don't know when you will have your first access to an ATM machine, so it's important to make sure that you have some currency. These days, you can actually order it from your banks if you bank at one of the larger banks, and I actually ordered for my upcoming trip to Asia some Singapore dollars and some Hong Kong dollars, and they actually shipped it overnight to my home. I also had the option of having them ship it to my nearest bank. Okay, um, I recommend that you have at least $150 in the local currency, because remember, you don't know how quickly you'll be able to access an ATM machine, and you don't want to have to stand in a really long line after traveling for 10 or, or 20 or 30 hours only to find out that not only have you waited in a long line, but now the, no longer, the ATM machine no longer works. So that's important. Check the weather in advance. Do you need a lightweight jacket, a heavyweight jacket, a raincoat? Do you need hats, gloves, boots? What do you need? Um, make sure that you have international converters or adapters or transformers. And what is that? This is the item that allows you to charge all of your items. Um, or to connect any of your electronics. This is one that I like because it actually has components for all the major parts of the world. For example, Japan, Australia, South America, New Zealand, Great Britain, Ireland, Africa, Hong Kong, Singapore, where I'll be going soon. On this side it has Southern Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, etc. So this comes in handy. If you have really large devices, like certain medical devices such as nebulizers, certain blow dryers even, uh, you'll need a transformer which is a larger piece of equipment because you don't want to blow a fuse and ruin your product. That actually happened to me one time. I learned the hard way. That's the best way to learn. Okay, next please bring copies of your passport. Everyone in your travel party should have a copy of their passport and consider bringing two extra copies of passport photos. If you lose your passport and need to replace it, you will need two passport photos. You may have to take a train to the next town over just to acquire them. So make it easy on yourself and always have them and just keep them packed in your travel bags. Make sure that all of your devices work properly before you leave. Twice I discovered right before an overseas trip that my camera was no longer working. So I had to run out at the last minute to buy another camera. For cameras, make sure that you have extra SD cards uh, so that you won't be limited to the number of photos and videos that you take. Pay all of your upcoming bills and if you're staying longer, pay for the next month so everything's taken care of. This is important. Check with your telephone carrier to see what international plans are available for data, telephone, texting, and any other services that might be important to you. Also find out which countries are included. Now, on one of my trips where I visited the Baltic capitals that included Russia, I was using data in Russia and I found out the hard way that Russia was not one of the countries included among the 190 nations that are included and so I had to spend a lot of time there negotiating with my carrier before they would reactivate my service and they were even blocking my access to free Wi-Fi before we came to uh, terms and agreed to an amount that I would, I would pay them. So I found out the hard way I wasn't a happy camper. I don't want that to happen to you. I'd also like for you to keep track of your data usage. So remember to reset the data counter on your smartphone right after your plane leaves the United States, and that way you can start at zero. 
Um, notify your postal carrier of all of your travel dates. And then finally, sometimes when you arrive back home, you can be overwhelmed with all the tasks that are facing you. In order to make it easy for you, what I'd like for you to consider is write a to-do list for when you travel. Write down the three or four or five most important things that you need to do when you return and that will ease some of your anxiety and it can help to make your transition back home much easier to manage. So thank you for joining me today. My name is Carla Scott. I'm a world traveler and today's topic was what is our travel checklist of activities that we can't leave until the last minute if we're traveling overseas. Bon voyage!